What is up guys? This is PVM Vertigo and welcome to Kerbal Space Program tutorial number one. And of course Kerbal Space Program is kind of like a space simulator game. It is made by the Indie Studio Squad. It's based in Mexico. So if you want to buy this game, of course you have to do that first. You can either go on Steam where there's actually a, um, a demo you can download also. It's free to play. The actual game that I'm playing right now is, is uh, 30 bucks I think it is now. So you can either get that on Steam, or you can get it at their website, which is KerbalSpaceProgram.com, if I am correct. And basically, if you launch from Steam, obviously you can just click play, but if you uh, go through their website, you can, here it is, you will get this folder, and you can either use the launcher or the raw application. I like to use the raw application. And it'll just load up for a little bit. It might take longer if you have a slower PC. But then you'll get to this title screen. I'll also do a rundown bottom to top of what things do. Quit obviously quits. Credits. Uh, I, mean, I guess you could kind of watch this. It's pretty interesting. Uh, next thing is add-ons and mods. This is important because once you play Kerbal Space Program for a while and you want to expand your game, you can use stuff like B9 Aerospace, uh, KW Rocketry I like. Kerbal Engineer helps you design things better, and of course, if you have a, if you have a beastly graphics card, you can try uh, running the visual pack, which makes planets look a lot better. So basically, yeah, this is a Curse Forge, or just the regular Curse site, and you can download all the types of mods you want. So that's a nice link for when you want to add mods into your Kerbal. There is the KSP community link. This is basically a bunch of forums. But if you want to interact with the community, I also suggest getting a Reddit account and go to r slash Kerbal Space Program. This is a nice place as well for sharing your designs and learning from people, learning from the best. And of course, next thing is settings. If you have, um, if you're running laggy a little bit, you can uh, try messing around with the graphics. I'm not going to do a tutorial on graphics settings or whatever, but the main thing is just to start the game. So as you can see, you can either resume saved, start new, do some training if you wanted. If you click here, you can do a bunch of different things that'll help you. But I'm just going to go into uh, into sandbox. So I'm going to start a new. Wait, actually, I have a sandbox, don't I? Yeah, tutorial, sandbox mode. Vertigo is the name of my uh, career world, though. Seventeen flights in progress. Quite the big world. This is just a blank um, sandbox world, though, because I'm going to teach you guys all the stuff you need to know in this little sandbox world. So when you click play, you'll be taken here. Now, to rotate cameras in Kerbal Space Program, you right-click and you drag. And if you want to pan, you click my, uh, middle mouse button and you go like that. And scroll in and out. Fairly simple, you know, ways of viewing things. Now, I'll just do a little bit of an overview of the buildings, just so that you know what they do. This is a space plane hangar. What you'll do is, it'll take you into more like of a like a car type building scenario. We can attach wings and it's only it only makes it symmetrical along one axis. So, if you put a wing on one side, there's not going to be four coming out, there's only going to be two. And when you build here and you launch it, it'll launch off this runway, so it'll be placed over here and you can just kind of roll it down the runway. And if you have wings, maybe take off. This is the astronaut facility. This is where you hire astronauts. So if you wanted to accept the astronauts, you could just click here, and you could add more astronauts to your missions. Fairly easy. You can have your missing list, your uh, lost list. This is an administration building. And if you're in career, this would help you make more money. This is the contracts building, the mission control. You can accept contracts here, where you can like launch satellites and stuff in career mode. This is the research building. This is crucial in career mode, so if you're going to play that first, you will need to use that facility a whole ton. Basically, when you explore things, you get science points in career, and you spend them here for better rockets and stuff. This here is the tracking station. So, it basically, you can look around, like you can see, oh, over here's the moon, I'm going to double click it, look at it, oh, it's beautiful. If you look over here, here's uh, Minmus, uh, Kerbin's second moon. You can look at it. Very nice. It's nice and green. 
and then you can pan out and see all the great things about the Kerbal system. This is Kerbal, the sun. You just kind of, I don't know, if you wanted, you can kind of explore all the different places you can go in Kerbal Space Program. But yeah, it's a tracking station, and when you launch something, you'll actually be able to um, see it. So if you launch it and you landed it on EVE, you can go to the tracking station, and that's how you get to places. So if you landed there, you could switch back over to that spacecraft via the tracking station, and we might do a demo of that in a later tutorial when it's needed. But what we're, we're uh, going to be working with today is the VAB, or the Vehicle Assembly Building, as it says there in the left. You can look at the names in the left corner. When we build something, we'll launch it out to the launch pad, so we'll just build something, I guess. So we're going to be building a basic spacecraft, okay? It's going to be called Test, of course. And when you first do this, you might be a little bit uh, confronted by all these parts. And that is the reason why I think you should start on career mode, because you won't be confronted by all these different parts. You don't even know what they do. You'll start out with the command pod, which is what I would expect you to use in sandbox testing, no matter what. Same controls, right click, makes it go like this, pan is, wait, no, you can't pan. If you hold middle mouse button, you can zoom. Uh, scrolling actually makes you go up and down. Because, you know, if your rocket's pretty tall, you might have to do that. So, yeah, this is the basic command pod. You can also use bigger ones, but we're just going to stick with the small command pod mark one for now. So we'll just go on a list of down these items, down the little tabs. This is pods. This is where you put your astronauts in. If you want to check who's in here, you can click the crew tab up here. And you can see that inside the command pod mark one, Jebediah Kerman is, if you want to take him out. It's empty and you can't launch it. If I were to launch it, it'd say, oh, there's no controls because no one can fly it. Jebediah Kerman is a pilot class. You can make him fly. Bill Kerman is an engineer, so he can't fly as well. But he can still fly if you made him. He just wouldn't be able to use stability assist, so it, the rocket would not be nearly as stable as it would if you put an actual pilot in the seat. So we just have this command pod, but we need it to um, we need it to fly. So if we go down one tab, there's fuel tanks. Now, if you click here, you'll see a bunch of different types of fuel tanks. If you're in career mode, it'll be a lot better because you'll only get the fuel tanks that have liquid fuel and oxidizer. If you click here, you'll see that it has liquid fuel and oxidizer in a proportion that is standard. That's what you need to run a rocket engine. You need both liquid fuel and oxidizer. You can't um you can't use a jet fuselage, it only uses liquid fuel. Because if you're flying a plane that uses this kind of stuff, it would only use liquid fuel because the oxidizer would be the air. And we are a rocket and we need to fly in space and guess what? There's no air in space. So we need to use an actual rocket fuel tank. There's bigger ones, large or a lot larger ones, but we're not going to be using those. We're just going to stick with the nice little uh, 1.25 meter parts. These, you will not need to use these unless you really want to. I mean, you can stick it on here, but we don't have to since this is monopropellant. Monopropellant powers uh, thrusters, which are over here. That just helps you control your rocket a little bit because if you, you know, like in the Apollo missions, if you ever heard about those, they use thrusters to keep themselves pointed in the right direction. We're not going to use those right now. So we don't need RCS. We don't need all these big things. I mean, if you wanted to experiment, of course you can after this tutorial. But we just want cylinders, plain old cylinders, as for right now. So for the next tab, it is engines. Now, what you're going to want to do is you want to get the right size. I mean, you can attach like a huge thing, but... the that doesn't look as good. If you're OCD like me, you're probably going to freak out. You also don't want to use this monopropellant engine because this uses monopropellant just like I said before. So you don't want to use that. You don't want to use an ion propellant or propulsion system. You will not see this in career mode. The only thing you'll see in career mode is probably this, uh, this thing here. Maybe, yeah, this thing. So if you do career mode, you won't have to worry about any of these random engines like the jet engines, which you don't want to use. So I'll attach, I'll attach what you will have in career mode. You won't have this big tank either, but we're just going to attach that for uh, training purposes. So this is pretty pretty standard. You have your solid rocket boosters. If you wanted to attach these, you could. 
we might do a little bit something later on in the tutorial with these rocket boosters, but as for right now, we're just going to stick with this. So command and control, obviously, you remember this. Uh, you got your, thr your uh, thrusters that aim four ways besides out. You have your one thruster that only aims out. So if you put a ton of these on the back, it would uh, it could propel you kind of, but it wouldn't be as powerful as an actual rocket engine. Advanced inline stabilizer. This is like, this is kind of like a um, electricity powered thruster. It's actually its technical term is a reaction wheel, but it uses a lot of power, and you won't be able to get power unless you use solar panels, which we don't have right now, and you wouldn't have if you were in career. Structural. This is basically a way of holding your spacecraft together nicely. I mean, you have your, your uh, structural fuselage. It has barely any mass. You have your girders, unless, unless you, uh, in case you wanted to launch like a space station or something, you could have girders coming out the side of it. That kind of thing. Um, wings. We will have winglets, delta wings, basically everything you need to build a plane if you were to do so. You can also build space shuttles if you wanted, but planes are what it's mainly used for. Now we're going to attach winglets, okay? And we are going to use a little bit of symmetry. So if you click here, you see that the symmetry mode is a dot. If it means a, when it's a dot, it means that it's only placing one of them. But if you click on two times, it'll place them at one where you where you're uh, aiming and one opposite. So if I were to click here and wanted to place it, it would aim right where I am and completely opposite of where I am. However, there are more symmetry modes. There's in fact three, four, six, and eight. So we're, and you can right click it to go back one too. So if it's six. Uh, left click makes it go 8, right click makes it go 6 again, and I'll do a demo, so of course 6, but we're going to use uh, 3 for right now. See how we have symmetrical, it's perfectly angled, I believe that is what, 120 degrees each, I passed geometry, so yeah, that, that's about right. So that's how you use symmetry, that's how you, we're going to be using these winglets because it makes it um, fly straighter of course, if you've seen real rockets in real life. But we're going to be moving on because we need to get this tutorial moving. So next thing, or the next tab, is utility. And you have a bunch of things that you will not need to use unless you want to experiment with them. I mean, you got stuff like batteries and stuff. You got, you know, solar panels in case you wanted to attach those. I mean, I don't, I don't think I can extend them right now, can I? No. But yeah, that's basically what those are for. The only thing we're going to be using right now is, ding, 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 the parachute. Because, of course, this thing is crucial for getting back unless you're going to try to land. But that that's too hard for most people, so let's just use the parachute, honestly. Well, let's do a quick overview of the science tab and then we'll get moving. So basically all this stuff is for career mode. So these things, the seismic accelerometer basically it's it says seismic because if you land somewhere like a moon that's the only way you can get science from it so if you were to right click it you'd be able to harvest science but only if you're landed this you can harvest science only if you're in deep space because you it's a uh, gravioli which is only found in space so you could uh, collect science from that also this is a science lab it's huge it's pretty big what this does in career mode is it basically processes the information, but the thing is, is it weighs 3.5 uh, tons. So you would not want to fly around with that unless you have it on the, like a, a space station or something. This is the barometer. Only can harvest science when you're in an atmosphere. So if you're in Eve's atmosphere, if you're in Duna's atmosphere, and if you're in this planet's atmosphere, you'd be able to get science from that. You have your mystery goos and your science juniors. Those are the things that you can only do one experiment of because you need, it has actual physical things you need to bring back or transmit via the communicatron, the comms DTS M1, or the communicatron uh, 888. And these things basically allow you to broadcast science across the, um, the Kerbal system. But we won't be doing that right now. What we will be doing is flying, and we don't need any science to fly. You won't see that in game, that's a mod. 
So let's just launch this the way it is. We're not going to mess with any staging right now because we, we don't, we're, we're noobs, right? We, we don't know how to stage. We're just going to get out here and we're going to figure out the controls. So when you click launch, you'll end up on the launch pad. See, that's where you, we assemble over there. The entire base is, or the entire uh, Kerbal Space Center is 3D rendered. It's very nice. And this is basically where you launch. So how you launch is make sure that before you launch, you actually click T. T enables SAS. That's why we use pilots because we'll, I'll show you what flying is like without SAS later. But basically, Jebediah Kerman is pilot is a pilot class Kerbal, so he can uh, enable SAS, which um, helps you fly in, helps you fly in one direction. That uh, that band annoys Eric, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, <laughs> okay, what was I what was I saying? I gotta keep on task here, or task here. Oh yeah, that's right. So he's a pilot, he can use stability assist, it's gonna be all in good, he's gonna be able to use these winglets and this gimbal to keep us in the right direction. But he can't right now, you wanna know why? Because we're not flying. So, we're gonna press shift to throttle up, control throttles down, and if you press X you can actually uh, throttle down all the way at one time. Pressing R enables rocket control. If you remember those thrusters before, if you had those enabled, the rocket control, when you press R, would help the, the monopropellant would help you stay in one direction. But we don't have that right now, so we're just going to press spacebar to launch. And you may be asking, why is my parachute deploying like this? Well, the answer is, uh, you forgot to stage, or we forgot to stage. So you need to remember that yeah, staging is important. So let's go do that right now. We're going to revert flight to the launch so we can do a demo of what staging is like. And we are going to make a nice staged up rocket before we leave this tutorial today. So what you're going to do is you see this, this is this plus button adds a stage. You want to bring your rocket below because it out of it's a uh, it stages bottom to top. So the first will be the engine. Second will be the parachute. Contrary to what you'll think, if you'll think if you'll think like, oh, zero comes before one, so zero is gonna fire before one. No, that's not how it works. The bottom one goes first. So we're gonna enable SAS again. We're gonna throttle up. And we're gonna launch. And you, as you can see, this launched. This uh, parachute did not. So you can kind of fly around. We can go D to go right. It's very stable, as you can see. Flies in one direction very smoothly. S goes left. W makes you go forward, but on the nav ball, this thing, it'll say that you're going uh, north. It, you may think it's uh, wrong because it's going down contrary to what you think it'd be, but that actually is north up there, so that means the nav ball is right. But we're going to be going up straight, and as you can see, we have these winglets, so we can't turn as well as we could because the winglets are going in the direction of prograde, which is what this means. Prograde means that you're, uh, it means your velocity. So if you're going that way, prograde will point that way because that's where the highest amount of velocity is going. So if you're going that way, prograde will say, "Oh yeah, you're going that way." So that way is pointing straight up. So that means that we are going to be going slightly into space today. Now you may be saying, "This is so slow," and you would be correct. Because if you press M, M makes you go to your map view. You can see that we are going to go up to 81,000 meters. And what it says is 1 minute and 42 seconds until that point. So it's going to take a long time. But, but thankfully, we can speed that time up. And if you want to know how, we time warp. And up here, you can see that it's times 1 right now. It's 1. You can click here and make it go double. But what I like to do is use period and comma, because period makes it go once. If you press it again, it goes three times, four times. If we were in space, we'd be able to do even more. See, if we go to 70,000 meters, there's even more ways. And if you click here, it actually starts at five times. So you can time warp a lot faster when you're in space. You can even go up to like 50 times, yeah. I think the max you can get is one million times time acceleration. But you have to be like flying really, really high and going really, really slow for the game to compensate you for that. So if we go to the map view, you can see 
that our spacecraft is falling down back towards the uh, Kerbin. And you'd be like, oh, well, my orbit is shifting. No, that's actually the planet rotating. You can see that we are going a little bit more to the left than we like to be. And right about now, you can see that we are quite a ways above the ocean, but we are still going to fire our parachute. So we just press spacebar again, deploys the parachute, and we will start slowing down because of it. We're going to time warp a little bit, but make sure you don't time warp at this close of a level, because at 500 meters, 500 meters at sea level, the parachute will deploy. And sometimes when you time warp, uh, your spacecraft might break or something because you're, I mean, if you have bigger spacecraft, it'd be more of an issue, but as of right now, it's not. But that's just a warning for time warping while doing this kind of stuff in the atmosphere because it might break things. I'm just going to say that it might break things. But now that we're stable, we can time warp some more. I just want to get this part over so we can do the last part of this tutorial where we build a functional spacecraft. So we landed here on our wings. We tip over a little bit because SAS wasn't there to help us because we had disabled it. And basically, this is what you'll end up doing if you are able to recover your spacecraft from space. And in career mode, what you would do is you would recover it. Or even in sandbox mode, I don't, I don't see why you wouldn't. So you're going to recover it using this button. You can go to Space Center if you just want to leave it lay here in case you had like a boat or uh, oh, something that you want to leave there. Maybe it's a rover on land that you didn't want to recover. And you will recover Jebediah Kerman. Uh, parts and science you can't do in Sandbox, but you would get all the cost and science from your rocket in career mode. And that would help you a lot. But what we're going to do to conclude this tutorial is we're going to build a little bit more of a complex rocket. We're going to do some complex staging. I mean, it's not really complex, but it's more complex than what we've been doing. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be overviewing just some different types of engines, just a little bit of an intro. And we're going to be introducing decouplers. Okay, so what a decoupler is, it's part of the structural tab. And what it does is if you add it, it will split it apart. So if we put a fuel tank beneath this and an engine beneath this, this is a low power one, but it is, uh, it is more efficient, so we're going to want to use that. We can put another decoupler below that, and you can see it comes up with an inner stage, so it looks nice. What will happen is this will fire first, if you have it staged correctly. You can do the staging here, and we don't have to do it um, as we launch. You stage this first, it'll expose this engine, and this whole part of the rocket below this will detach. So that's how you get the staging that you would be doing in real life, because staging is obviously the most effective way of dropping mass. So we're just going to add more fuel tanks. Don't worry if you add more than one fuel tank above and below each other, because this fuel tank will stream its fuel into this one, and this one will stream it into the engine. So it'll be just fine. So we're going to build a little bit of a, uh, a complex type thing. We're going to be using this type of winglet. You can use advanced canards, winglets, and winglets. Use this one as well, but we're going to be using this ones or these ones. And this is how you place it, but if you wanted to offset it, you can click on it, and you can drag it back and forth. This is what I do for complex uh, design. We'll be talking about that in a later episode when we go over complex design, but as of right now, I'm just using it so that it can look nice, basically what it's for. We're also going to use one of the other things in structural. Besides the coupler, we have one more thing we're going to use today. This launch stability enhancer. What this does is if you um, make it symmetrical, we'll be putting it at four times, you can attach it right to the bottom. And if we drag this down, it moves down. And when we launch, we're going to want to, before we launch actually, we're going to want to have these in the same category or stage, stage four, as the engine. So when we launch this engine, the stages will also, or this stability enhancer will also uh, detach. 
So this is just a basic rocket. Pretty much anyone can come up with this, but if you're new to this game, you might not be able to figure this out. So I'm just going to make a short little flight with this uh, this two-stage rocket. It's, I mean, it has four stages, but it only has two engine stages. So if I were to launch this, which I'm going to, what I expect to see is all four of these things letting go of the rocket and the engine firing. If we do that, it works. So we are flying away, not as fast as before, but remember that speed does not matter. Because if we're going to launch, we want to keep our speed under 400 meters per, or 100 meters per second. Because if you see that we start accelerating too fast, you'll see a bunch of wind resistance going on us. Just like in real life, if you fly fast, you will start slowing down from the wind speed or the air, just because the air has that much drag. So we are going to turn. We can't turn that much because our thing is pretty heavy. It's kind of hard to turn, to be honest. But that's okay. I'm going to look at this. We should have probably used a different engine because this engine does not have a gimbal. And a gimbal is what you need to turn rockets. Like, look at that. It, it can't aim its thruster any differently, so it's kind of annoying, but we're flying anyway. This is our first flight. Remember, this is our first flight that's going to go anywhere besides just up in space and then coming back down. This will go a lot further. So what we're going to do is once we get up to 10,000 meters, or 9,000 meters, we're gonna, if you wanted to turn, I'm turning early because my rocket doesn't like to turn that much. At this height, we're going to want to aim towards this degree. It says 90 degrees, but it's really 45, because 45, it says right here, 90 degrees just means that we're going perfectly horizontal. But it's really 45. If you think about it, that way is up, this way is sideways. We want to be perfectly, kind of like in the middle. And we're slowly tilting over. As you can see, our speed is increasing a whole ton because we're getting up in the atmosphere. The lighter blue is the most heavy atmosphere. This is the lesser atmosphere. This is space. And we are breaking out of the atmosphere, so we're accelerating a lot faster, combined with the fact that we're running out of fuel, which is most of our mass. We have a really fast rocket. So we ran out of fuel, okay, in this stage, but we still have fuel in the second stage because it does not feed into that engine, so you have to worry about that. So we're just going to decouple it by pressing space, and we can all oh, look at that, look at how nice it is, because it is not as big as the other rocket. So we're just going to stage again to fire this, and we will get off into orbit. We are not be, we're not going to be going into orbit today. I'm just going to demo this staging, so I'm just going to uh, press X to kill that. And we're just going to do a little bit of space flight. Now, uh, remember what I said about stability assist? If you disable this, watch as I try to turn it. It won't, like, stabilize me. I'll, if I try to stabilize it, it'll still be wobbling a little bit. I mean, I can try to do it like that. But if I nudge it, it'll keep spinning. But if I press stability assist, it will stop spinning. So that's a helpful thing to use. So you can't, remember, you have to have pilots to use SAS or stability assist. So if you have anybody else on board that is in the pilot seat, it will not work. So we're just going to re-enter. We don't want to take this entire stage with us, and we actually have another decoupler. You could right-click to decouple this if you wanted to. You can right-click to interact with all objects. This is just the basic controls of the Kerbal Space Program. What we're going to be doing is just pressing spacebar to decouple it. So this is what you would see in real life. You just see a single capsule flying down, very standard. We are time warping, and we're getting some re-entry heat. Now, right now, this doesn't do anything, but later on it will, so be wary of that. Remember, this game is still in alpha. Or actually, it's in beta now, I think, right? Yeah, 0 0.90 beta. Okay. We're actually nearing on 1.0, though, so that's good. All right, so we are... Um, flying, and we're going to deploy the parachute, so why not? If we disable SAS, you can see that the parachute keeps us stable. And I actually like landing without SAS because you can just kind of 
float around and blob down right on the ocean. So we're going to time warp down. I'll show you what happens if you time warp to 500. Yeah, you can see that we kind of glitched out a little bit there. Now it didn't rip apart our rocket like it normally would. But keep in mind that with larger spacecrafts, it would rip it apart. So that's why you don't time accelerate while doing stuff like this. However, it's just a capsule, so it doesn't really matter because this thing, it, this is basically two parts, so it won't leg out and glitch out too much. So we've landed. This is pretty much the end of the tutorial. And on an ending note, I'll just show you how to EVA. If you go on Jebediah Kerman, you can either IVA or EVA. IVA, you can look at his perspective, you can look down, oh, there's my Kerbal hands. If you were to throttle up, you could see the little throttle thing going up on the side. But, yeah. Press C to change camera view. It's pretty self-explanatory. What we want is we're going to EVA on an ending note. So you can just kind of swim around, you know. Very nice. I think we're going to cut it here. Thank you for watching this Kerbal Space Program tutorial. I hope I uh, hope you learned something valuable today. I try to make it as simple as possible, and we'll be. We'll, but we'll keep in mind that we will not just be doing simple stuff. We'll be doing more advanced stuff later. Next tutorial will probably be advanced rocket design and maybe orbiting or something. But if you want to see that, you're going to have to stay subscribed because that will not be for a while because I will not be updating this regularly. I'll just kind of make it whenever I want. So if you want more of these, leave a like, leave a comment. I, I enjoy your feedback. So make sure you do that. Stay tuned for more Kerbal Space Program tutorials. This is PVM Vertigo. Peace out.